Today, I'll be giving a guide on how to identify modern American freight locomotives, whether you see them on the road, on the news, in a movie, or even a model railroad. It can be quite tricky to identify because to the untrained eye, American freight trains can look pretty similar. And you may wonder, how are these two locomotives different? Aren't they the exact same thing? Nope. Now, the easiest way to identify a locomotive is simply looking for the name label located usually underneath the cab window or on the sill. The second easiest way is to Google search the railroad reporting mark with its road number, which is on the side of the cab, and go to railroadpicturesarchives.net. This is a database of pretty much every single American locomotive, and it'll tell you what model it is. I actually use this website quite a lot, but what if you want to learn how to tell them apart just by looking at it? So let's get started. So in the US, there are two main manufacturers of diesel electric locomotives, GE and EMD. GE stands for General Electric, and EMD stands for Electric Motive Diesel. You can tell them apart because each manufacturer has a distinct style and layout, like the trucks, the cab, and radiator designs. GEs are generally more common than EMD and can often be identified with these triangular corners of the nose sloping down towards the front. The GE Evolution Series, commonly known as the GEVO, is the most popular American freight locomotive. There are two main GEVOs, the ES44AC and the newer ET44AC. ES stands for Evolution Series, 44 for 4400 horsepower, AC for AC power, while the T in ET stands for Tier 4 emission standards. It's pretty easy to tell it's a GEVO from its radiator section. For the ES44, it consists of two parts, a boxy segment in the front followed by radiator wings. While on the ET44, the radiator is taller with a V-shape throughout. Also on the bottom half of the ES44, it has differing heights, while the ET44, it's all the same. The AC versions have a flat auxiliary cabinet behind the cab on the conductor side, while the lesser common DC-powered ones like the ES4 DC have two compartments. Also, if you see a CSX GEVO without its lightning bolt, it's a DC unit. The 40 in ES40 DC means they downgrade the horsepower to 4000. Railroads may derate their locomotives to put less strain on the engine for longevity. However, Norfolk Southern has since repowered their ES40 DCs to become ES44 DCs. There's also the ES44 C4 and the ET44 C4, mainly used by BNSF. They're pretty much the exact same thing, just the middle axle of each truck is unpowered and it doesn't have a traction motor underneath. Some railroads also have their own designations like ES44 AH or ET44 AH. The H stands for heavy ballasted for more tractive effort and would have extra weight attached. Union Pacific also has several names. The normal ES44 AC is called the C45 AC. The 45 in this case doesn't refer to its horsepower, but because the C44 AC was already taken by another locomotive, the AC4400 CW, and the full name is actually C45 AC CTE. CTE stands for Control Tractive Effort, which is a software they have installed. Then they decide to make a heavy version of it called the C45 AH. Now apart from labeling, there's no real visual difference between them. And all Union Pacific ET44s will be called the C45 AH. Now if that sounds all confusing, you could just stick to GE's official name like ES and ET44 AC. Now the predecessors to the GEVO is the AC4400 CW and the Dash 9 series. The AC4400 CW uses AC traction motors while the Dash 9 uses DC traction. Both of them have radiators with wings that go all the way and they are much shorter than the GEVOs in length and height. On the conductor side, the AC4400 is similar to the GEVO with an air conditioner vent placed at the bottom of the cab. There also is a large AC inverter cabinet behind it. If you look at the Dash 9, the air conditioner is moved behind the cab. And since it's using DC, it doesn't need an inverter, so the cabinet is much smaller. The AC44 usually has three dynamic brake vents, while the Dash 9 only has two vents close to the cab. However, some AC44s also have two vents, but it'll be further back. And on the engineer side, the AC44 has two sets of vents underneath the cab, which is not present on the Dash 9. And just be aware that some Canadian Dash 9s and AC4400s don't come with air conditioners. The Dash 9 has a couple of variants. The C44-9W is the most common. Both the C44-9W and the AC4400CW have four square vents in a 2x2 underneath the radiator on the conductor side. There's also the C40-9W, but they derate the horsepower. The W in their name stands for Wide Cab, also known as the Comfort Cab or Safety Cab. Wide 
side cabs are where the nose would occupy the entire width of the cab. This is opposed to the standard cab, which is an older design with a narrow width nose. The original C40-9 variant had a standard cab design and was solely operated by Norfolk Southern. They were easily recognizable because the air conditioners are mounted on the roof, and people gave them the nickname Top Hat. There are also rebuilds of Dash 9s to AC 4400s called the AC 44 C6M, mainly used also by Norfolk Southern. You can spot it's different from the regular AC 4400 or the wide nose Dash 9s because the nose door will be on the engineer's side, while on the conductor's side, there's only one vent underneath the cab. Now, apparently, there are some AC 4400s with only one vent under the cab, so another way you can tell is the central air intake on the conductor's side is very small and square shaped. There's also another rebuild of the Dash 9 called the AC 44 C4M, only used by BNSF. It too also has that tiny air intake. The AC 4400 also had a rebuild called the CM44 AC. It's different in that it has a raised grill over its radiator instead of being flush, and the backside vents have varying heights instead of being all level. The next GE locomotive we'll talk about is the AC 6000 CW. It's similar to the AC 4400 CW, but it has more horsepower. If you look at the radiator, it's very long and protrudes, leaving an overhang in the back, and there's also a little bit in the front. Also, on the engineer side, the air reservoir tanks are moved up, and there's this additional step. And the roof actually has two exhaust stacks side by side. There was a version of it called the AC4460 CW which had the same shell but they put a 4400 horsepower engine and it was called a convertible because you can convert it later to the full 6000 but they never did. One big difference is that this one only has one exhaust stack. Union Pacific had a rebuild of them called the C44 ACM. It has a fresh new paint job with the American flag, either the big one or the small one on the nose. And it has a new PTC antenna array on the cab roof. This C44 ACM class also includes the rebuilt Dash 9s and AC4400 CWs. All three of them can be easily spotted by having a raised grill on the radiator and this rectangular compartment here on the conductor's side. The last series of GE locomotives we'll talk about is the Dash 9's predecessor, the Dash 8. One way to tell between a Dash 8 and a Dash 9 is that the Dash 8 uses an older truck design, while Dash 9s use GE high edge trucks which look more like rollerblades, which is their nickname. The Dash 8's central air intakes are also wide and seem to be closer to the dynamic brake vents. It also doesn't have those 2x2 two two square vents on the conductor side. One exception to these rules are there are some CSX C4-9Ws that use this older Dash 8 car body, and the same old trucks with upgraded Dash 9 internals inside, so on the outside it looks exactly like a Dash 8, but it's actually a Dash 9. The only way you could tell is if the road numbers are from 9000 to 9052. The Dash 8 also has standard cabs, the C40-8 and the wide cab c 40 8 W, as well as the four axle BB truck variants. So finally we're done with GE, now let's move on to EMD. Now EMD has a lot of variety and classes, the two main model designations are GP and SD. GP stands for general purpose and all of them have four axles, while SD stands for special duty and they have six axles. Let's start with my favorite, the EMD SD70 ACE, or as some people they call it the ACE. The 70 stands for the number series, AC for AC traction, and the E for energy efficient to comply with Tier 2 EPA emission standards. EMD has a distinct style difference from GE locomotives. For the SD70 ACE, the nose or hood in railroading terms is flat in the middle and then slopes downwards on the sides and makes a notch in the front corners. Compare that with the GE, which are triangular. An easy way to tell it's an SD70 ACE is from looking at its radiator section, which makes this huge wedge with two circular fans on top. It's also placed so it's not directly at the end of the body, but there's some spacing for the dynamic brakes. Also, the AC inverter cabinet behind the cab will have two long vents on the sides. There is a DC version of the SD70 ACE called the SD70 M-2. It's mostly used by Canadian National and Norfolk Southern. And the, basically the way to tell is the two long vents on the sides aren't present. Instead, there's three rows of panels. There's also a newer variant of the SD70 ACE called the SD70 ACE T4. The T4 stands for Tier 4 EPA emission standards. Union Pacific classifies them as SD70 AH T4. Four, while CSX calls theirs the ST70AH. Basically, the midsection is filled in, and the front nose notch is lower and slopes from the cab window, which it's using teardrop windshields for better visibility. 
And if you look at it from above, you can see it has three radiator fans. Now another similar looking locomotive to the SC70 Ace is the SC70 ACU. The U stands for upgrade because these are rebuilt from SD90 Max. It's mainly used by Canadian Pacific and Norfolk Southern. The way you can tell it's an ACU is that there are two panel covers in the cabinet instead of vents. It also has three fans on top of the radiator instead of two. And in the rear, the sandbox sticks out and creates a squared cornered edge. So next up we have the SD90 Mac, which actually had three versions. The first one shipped were called the SD9043 Mac, the extra 43 for 4300 horsepower engines because EMD had technical problems and they couldn't use their 6000 horsepower H engine. The second one is the SD90 Mac H and this is what the H engine installed. These two are similar but the 43 version has a box and no air tank underneath the sill. Both these versions are different from the ACU because there's this exposed hole on the side and there's no front corner notches. Now the third one is the SD90 Mac H2. Now this one did have front corner notches from this newer phase 2 cab, but a lot of vents are placed in different positions. There also is a wing above the fuel tank, and the sandbox doesn't stick out in the back. Also the H2 has two fans instead of three. The next locomotive is the SD80 Mac. This is similar to the SD9043 Mac, but the sandbox doesn't go all the way to the roof, it just stops two thirds of the way there, making an indent. Also in the nose, you'll see indents for marker lights because the sole buyer, Conrail, loved having marker lights. Now let's move on to the SD70 Mac. Now this is the first EMD we're looking at. It doesn't have that huge wedge radiator. Instead, it's pretty flat with the body. There's no front corner notches and has three radiator fans. There's also this angled blower duct on the side, which you'll see on a lot of ENBs later on. And there's also two vents diagonal from each other behind the cab. There was a recent rebuild of the SD70 Max called the SD70 Mace, which CSX designates as the SD70 AC. It looks similar to the Mac, but the vents on the sides are slightly different. On each side, there's one small vent at the bottom and the other vent turns into a square. Then we have the SD70 M. It's actually one of EMD's most common locomotives. This one uses DC traction, so it doesn't have AC in its name. It's different from the SD70 Mac in that there's a battery box step up on the left hand side and the blower duct is wider and not angled. There also isn't a railing that elevates around it and has different vents. The SD70M actually has a few different variations of their radiator fans. The original ones were flat while the newer flared ones had two styles. An older one with two large vents and the newer four square ones. Also some SD70Ms had the newer phase 2 cab which looks similar to the ones on the SD70 AC Eat but the heights is slightly different. It's also different different from the SD70 Max since there's no SD70Ms with an isolated cab. If you saw a lot of previous EMDs we've looked at, there's this rubber gasket lined in the nose. They call these whisper cabs, and it was a newer future. Though not all SD70 Max, ACEs, and M-2s had whisper cabs. The original SD70 ACEs were nicknamed Thunder Cabs because crews complained the cabin has such excessively bad noise and vibration. The next locomotive we'll look at is the SD70i. The I stands for isolated cab. It's basically just an SD70M with the whisper cab installed for Canadian National. Then we have the SD75M. This is like the SD70M, but there is an additional blower duct on the engineer's side. There's also the SD75i with the isolated cab. The largest operators of the SD75s were Santa Fe, now BNSF, and Canadian National. Then we have the SD70ACC. This is a rebuilt SD70 by Norfolk Southern, converting it from DC to AC. Like the SD70ACE, it has those two long vents and the notches in the nose, but the back half and the vents are similar to the ends that we've looked at. Next is the original SD70. It's basically the SD70M with a standard cab. The predecessor to the SD70 is the SD60. This one has an angled blower duct like the SD70 Mac. A big difference between the SD60 and the 70 is the trucks. The SD60 uses this older HTC truck while the 70 uses HTCR radio trucks. Also the SD60 doesn't have that extra bottom grille in the back. There was also wide cab versions of this called the SD60M. Originally it had a triclops cab with three front windows but later they started using the EMD safety cab and it had this elevated walkway. Another variant was the SD60i with an ice isolated cab. There was also a rebuilt by Norfolk Southern called the SD60E. They're relatively easy to spot because they have the crescent cab which adds this little visor overhanging the windshield. Also they have a diagonal cut on the front vent. Then we have the SD50 and this came with a standard cab and apparently it has a terrible reputation. On the outside it looks pretty much like an SD60. The only difference I can find is on both sides there are four latches under the radiator instead of six latches. Next up is the SD45. It's different from the SD50 in that it has dynamic brake housing in the middle roof with two fans on top and the blower duct curves at the top. It also only has one upper vent in the front but no lower one and flared radiators. 
There also was the SD45-2 variant. You can see compared to the SD45, there is a water level sight glass on the engineer side. Also, if you look at the trucks, the Dash 2 has damping struts in the middle axle. Also, it didn't include flared radiators. There's also a variant owned by Iri Lekawana with an extra large 5,000 gallon fuel tanks. And there's louvers in the back. There's also the SD45T-2, specially ordered by Southern Pacific. The T stands for tunnel and it's known as a tunnel motor. Basically, there was an overheating problem when running trains in long tunnels. So they moved the radiator cooling air intakes down to walkway level, which fixed the problem. Now we finally reached the famous SD40-2. Unlike the SD50, the SD40-2 has a great reputation and is one of EMD's most popular locomotives. Compared to the SD45-2, the body is shorter, so there's a gap at the end platform. Norfolk Southern also has a high hood variant of it. The SD40-2 also has a tunnel motor version of it called the SD40T-2. You can spot the difference between this and the 45T-2 with two panels panels instead of three. CSX also has a rebuild of the SD40-2, they call the SD40-3, and it's nicknamed the SpongeBob Square Cab because the cab is quite boxy. There are other railroads with SD40-3s, but it's not really an official EMD standardized thing, it just means it's an upgrade SD40-2, so they may look different from each other. Now let's move on to the SD38-2. This is different in that it only has two radiator fans instead of three, and the radiator vents are smaller. Next we have the SD35. To spot this locomotive, look at the radiator fans there'll be two large ones with one smaller fan in the middle so that's about it for the sd series there's a couple more models but they aren't really used anymore in class one railroads now let's review the gp series also known as the jeeps as i said before gp locomotives have four axles instead of six in the sd the most popular jeep is the gp 38-2 if you compare it to the sd 40-2 there's only two radiator fans instead of three and two last axles so it's a much smaller locomotive the dynamic brake housing is also shorter and there's only one fan in the middle, although there are some GP38-2s with no dynamic brakes. Also, if you look on the roof, there are two or four small exhaust stacks. Norfolk Southern also has a high hood version. Then we have the GP39-2, which is equipped with a turbocharger, so it doesn't have any of those tiny exhaust stacks. Instead, there's this thick rectangular turbocharger exhaust stack towards the cab end. Then we have the GP40-2, which also has a turbocharger, but there are three radiator fans instead of two, and the radiator is longer. CSX also rebuilt the GP38-2 and GP40-2 40-2 into dash 3s, so they have the SpongeBob Square Cab just like the SD40-3. Next up, we have the GP50. Compared to the GP40-2, the radiator vents on the sides are 8 inches taller, so they look thicker. Then we have the GP60. This is identified by having this rectangular dynamic brake housing on the sides. Now, there are some older GP60s without this feature, so another way you can tell is that it has this straight angled blower duct and doesn't curve at the top. There also is the GP60M where they added a wide cab, and the GP60 B, which is a B unit. This had no cab and the dynamic brake housing is moved towards the front. These B units were ordered by Santa Fe to be placed between other locomotives for added power at a cheaper price. They actually still operate today with Santa Fe successor BNSF. Now we're gonna go backwards to the GP35, which compared to the GP38-2, it has a turbocharger stack and two large radiator fans with one small one in between. Then we have the GP30. It has this pretty bizarre roofline bulge from the cab, goes to the middle and soups down in the back. Then we have the GP15-1. These have bottom radiator air intakes just like the tunnel motors and it's actually nicknamed the baby tunnel motors. However, this one isn't actually designed for tunnels. And there's actually two versions. One has a standard air filter and normal size blower duct while the other version has louvers on the side and a small blower duct. There's also the GP15T but the T also doesn't stand for tunnels. Instead, it means it's turbocharged. So there is a turbo exhaust port on the roof. The Chessy ones also had dynamic air brakes but there are some without it. Then there's the GP15 AC which used AC power. The only visual difference between this and the normal GP15-1 is that the sill is completely straight. If you look at the dash one there's this little overhanging bit and it shares this detail with the GP15T. So that's it for the GP series. Now let's move on to the MP series. The MP stands for multi-purpose and it also has only four axles. The most common is the MP15 AC. These are primarily used as switchers. It's a lot different from all the other locomotives because it's an end cab. And the cab is at the end of a long hood where there are two exhaust stacks in the middle. There's also a silenced exhaust version of it with a squared box around it. The DC variant of the MP15AC is called the MP15DC. It's recognizable with a front facing radiator air intake instead of on the sides, as well as two equal columns of louvers near the cab. Then there's the MP15T, which is similar to the MP15AC, but it has a turbocharger exhaust port at the top, a blower duct on the right hand side, and a large square vent on 
the left hand side. So now the last category of EMD locomotives is the SW series, which stands for switcher. In addition to the MP15AC, the SW1500 is also a common switcher. In comparison, it has a shorter length, so its proportions are a bit squished. It has a front facing air intake, and there is a smooth downward slope from the hood directly to the cab. It shares these characteristics with other SW series like the SW1200, but that has equal height louvers and the SW1000, which only has one exhaust stack. And that's it for EMD. Now, one last category I would like to briefly discuss is slugs. No, 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 not that slug. I'm talking about railroad slugs. So they're basically locomotives that have been gutted out so they don't have a prime mover engine or radiator vents. Instead, all their electrical power comes from a mother unit. This is different from a B unit, which still has an engine inside. Some slugs retain their cabin controls so they can be a lead unit, while others are chopped down and used as yard slugs. Slugs can be useful because at low speeds, locomotives produce more electricity than it actually needs, which may overheat the traction motor, so they divert this to the slug for more braking and horsepower. There are a lot of varieties of slugs. Most of the time, it's made by repurposing old used locomotives to have a new life. For example, this slug is an Alco MT6, which was originally a Pennsylvania Railroad Alco RSD12 locomotive built in the 1950s, so it's pretty cool that it's still in operation today, even though its original manufacturer, Alco, doesn't even exist anymore. Also, you can tell it's an EMD or GE just based on engine noise. EMD engines have a high-pitched whine sound. <laughs> while GEs are sort of like a low grumble. So now let's have a quiz on identifying some locomotives. So here is a CSX train in Ashland, Virginia, popular rail founding spot. Now let's try to identify this. You can pause the video right here and try to guess what locomotive this is. So the answer is the ES44AC or the ES44AH. We know this because if you look at the front, it has the GE style nose, so triangular right here. And if you look at the radiator, there are two distinct parts. That's how we know it's the ES, not the ET44. All right, so here is the next locomotive. Now we can only see the back of it, but you can still kind of guess what it is. And I know it's some kind of EMD because of these radiators here in the back flat. They also have this angled blower duct here, so I know it's probably like an SC70 Mac. And I know it's a Mac E or Mace because we have this bottom vent here. That's one of the newer rebuilts. And then we have the square vent here, so definitely it's going to be a mace. CSX also names it the SD70AC. That's just CSX designation. All right, so for the next locomotive, you can see in the front two axle bogies, so it's definitely like a GP. And if you move further on, you can see it has three radiator fans. So it's definitely like a GP40-2. And then if you look at the next one, this one also has three radiator fans. So maybe it's just another GP40-2. And if you look at the side of the cab, yes, it's a GP40-2. So yeah, that's how you identify locomotives. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys found this guide helpful. There's a lot of new things that I've learned. Like I had no idea the SD50 was such a hated locomotive or that being NSF still operates B units or just how many excessive rebuild classes Norfolk Southern has. And there are lots of things that I haven't even mentioned. Let me know down in the comments if you have any cool information to add or if I made a mistake anywhere. And big thanks to all the people who generously gave me permission to use their footage, especially Baltimore and Ohio Railroad and Trainman Brody. You can check out their channels, links in the description. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you had already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.